welcome to this lesson looking at answering questions on the electricity topic for AQA A level physics. So in today's lesson, what we're going to do is look at the different concepts in the electricity in the electricity topic by answering a few questions of multiple choice uh, type on the AQA A level physics specification. So in this first particular question, which of the following is an SI unit for the electromotive force? Now firstly, from the options given, you'll note that it's not asking for an SI base unit, so therefore it must be an SI derived unit. Okay? And as a result, when we look through this, okay, the EMF is the work done per unit charge at, into a circuit. So therefore it's the voltage. So it, it will have an SI derived unit of the volt. So the answer will be D. Now in this next particular question, it's asking what is the reading on the digital voltmeter in this potential divider circuit? Now there's a couple of things to note in this particular question. Number one, right, that the resistors have an equal resistance and there's a diode there, but the diode is acting in the opposite direction to the current flow. So if the diodes act in the opposite direction to the current flow, there'll be no current flowing down that particular path. So we can discount that particular path in this particular question. Now, the point is, if each resistor has the same resistance, each output will therefore have the same resistance. Now, as in a potential divider circuit, as potential difference is directly proportional to resistance, they'll each take an equal share of the EMF. Now, if you look at the particular EMF, it is 3 volts, so therefore, if there's 3 volts and there's 2 outputs, each with the same resistance, so we'll share equally, it'll be 3 divided by 2, so it's 1.5 volts. In this next particular question, it's asking about how can you work out the expression for lost volts. Now, lost volts is the voltage due to internal resistance. Now, we know that in general, V equals IR. So lost volts is going to be I times by R, but the R in this example is the internal resistance of the circuit. So therefore it's going to be I times by small r. So lost volts equals I times by small r. In this next question, what happens here? Well, you'll notice that if the switch is closed, X and Y will become parallel to each other. Now, when they're in parallel, this means they'll have a lower equivalence resistance because when you're in parallel, there's more paths in the circuit, so the equivalence resistance goes down. So therefore, the, P, the resistance in, the, in that particular output will be lower. Now, in a potential divider, the potential difference is proportional to resistance. So when the resistance is lower, in X and Y, because the equivalent resistance is lower, the PD is lower, so therefore Y and X will be dimmer. Now, in a potential divider, you know the total EMF in equals the total PD out. So if X and Y have a lower PD than previously, Z will have to have a higher PD because the total PD in will equal the total EMF um, into the circuit, so therefore Z will be brighter. Now, at this next particular question, well, if you look at this particular question, it says it's got an EMF of 1.5 volts and a potential difference of 1 volt. Now, we know that in a circuit, current equals V over R. But which V are you going to use? Are you going to use EMF or are you going to use terminal potential difference? Well, you would use terminal potential difference in your equation because the EMF is a theoretical value. It's a value before you consider any internal resistance of the power supply. So, in fact, the 5 ohm resistor is in fact only receiving 1 volt of, of potential difference. So you do 1 over 5, so it's 0 0.2 amps, which will be B. In this next particular question, what can you look at? Well, there's two types of configuration in here. We've got parallel configuration and we've got series configuration. Now, we know that the equivalence resistance in series will increase, but if you've got them in parallel, the equivalence resistance will decrease. Now, R only contains a parallel configuration, so we'll have the lowest resistance. P only contains a series configuration, so we'll have the highest resistance. S will contain both, so we'll have a higher resistance than Q, which only has one resistor. So the answer is A, in the sense of P has the highest resistance, R has the lowest resistance, and S will have a higher resistance than Q. Next question. 
Well, it's asking what will the electrical potential or the potential difference be at x. So it's a potential divider situation. Now you know that in a potential divider, the PD is directly proportional to the resistance. So at x, you'll notice at x it has 50 kilo ohms, but above x it has 10 kilo ohms. So it takes 5 sixths of the total resistance, because the total resistance of the circuit is 60 kilo ohms, and the x um, particular branch has 50 kilo ohms. So this means it will take 5 sixths of the potential difference, because resistance is directly proportional to a potential difference in a potential divider. Now you'll notice the EMF is 6 volts, so 5 sixths of 6 volts is 5 volts. The next one here, you'll notice in this particular circuit, you've got an internal resistance R and an external resistance large R. Now you'll notice it says that the EMF E and the resistance of the load resistor um, large R remain fixed but the internal resistance small r changes over time. So what type of graph will you get? Well, basically, if r and e are remaining fixed, the only factor that can affect current is the internal resistance. Now, when the internal resistance is increased, the current flow will decrease, so it'll give a graph with a negative gradient. And it'll also uh, be slightly sloping due to the resistive effects of the circuit, so the answer would be B. Next one. Well, we know that okay, power equals I squared R, so the power is directly proportional to current squared, and the current split is an inverse of resistance. Now, on path 2, okay, you've got 2 ninths of the resistance, so 7 ninths of the current. Path 3, 3 ninths of the resistance, so 6 ninths of the current. Path 4, 4 ninths of the resistance, so 5 ninths of the current. So you look at your, your ratio, and it's going to be C. Right, next one. Well, when S is closed, the resistors are now in parallel, so the equivalent resistance is now lower. So this means as R is lower, PD is going to be lower, because remember, we know that in a circuit, resistance is directly proportional to the potential difference of the circuit. So that will give a lower value of the voltmeter. Now, in the series circuit, as we know, the equivalent resistance has gone down, and there's the same EMF, that has not changed. This, therefore, means that you'll have a higher value on your ammeter, because the current has gone up. In this next particular question, you know from Kirchhoff's laws that basically in a, in a loop, the EMF into a circuit equals the PD out of the circuit, and that each loop supplied by the same EMF source must have the same potential difference. So if you look in loop 1, you'll notice that uh, basically, you know that the PD is going to be 1.2 volts plus 4.1 volts plus 3.7 volts. So it's going to be 9 volts. Now, because each loop has to have the same potential difference, therefore, if loop 1 has a PD of 9 volts, loop 2 must have a PD of 9 volts. So in loop 2, we know the total PD out is 9 volts, and we know that it's got 1.2 volts, 2.2 volts, and 1.2 volts in this entire loop. Okay, plus that value of R. So that value of R must be 4.4 volts to get an overall value of 9 volts. In this next one, in a potential divider circuit, we know that the PD is directly proportional to the resistance. But we also know that for a conductor, when the length of a wire or the conductor increases, the resistance of it will increase because there are more ion charge carrier collisions. And therefore, if PD is directly proportional to R and R increases, PD will increase. So that, value, so that shows you the graph must be a positive gradient, have a positive correlation, and the value of PD will never reach 6 volts because there's resistance in the circuit, both internally and as a load resistance, because there's a load resistor there, so the PD out will never equal the EMF in, so you'll never actually reach 6 volts. So the answer has to be B. In the next question, what do you know? Well, as the temperature of a thermistor increases, the resistance of a thermistor will decrease. That's a relationship you know for a thermistor. So this means as the PD of the thermistor increases, the resistance will also decrease. Okay, Sorry, the, the potential difference will also decrease because potential difference and resistance are directly proportional in a potential divider circuit. So that will mean that the voltmeter reading across the thermistor will go down. Now, in the circuit, as the total resistance is decreased, 
the same EMF is being supplied, so the current therefore will increase. So the ammeter value goes up. In this next uh, particular question, it's asking for the graph of resistivity against temperature for a superconductor. Now, in a superconductor, below the critical temperature, there is zero resistivity. At the critical temperature, the resistivity will drop. And at above the critical temperature, the material acts like a conductor. So as the temperature increases, the conductivity increases. So the only graph that shows that is A. Next one. You've got to work out the resistances for each of these networks. Now, in number one, you know that you've got two particular pa uh, parallel arms, one of two, uh, two ohms and one of four ohms. So you work that one out and you do one over R total equals one over R1 plus one over R2. So you work that through and you get a, a total resistance or equivalent resistance of 1.3 ohms. You do the same for B, except you now use your different values because there's different size values resistors in your arms. So you get 1.5 ohms. Now for C, you work out the equivalence resistance by doing 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2 and then flip it over to get the answer of 0 0.4 ohms. But then you add it to 2 ohms because that resistor is in series with that parallel branch. So you get 2.4 ohms. And you do the same for D and you work it out to 1.5 ohms. So the total value is going to be C. And you can probably work that out anyway because you've got a 2 ohm resistance series, so it's probably going to dominate because things their resistance gets larger in series. Now, what is the potential difference? Well, we know potential difference is the work done out of a circuit over charge. So it's joules over coulomb, coulombs. We know that charge is current times by time, so it's going to be the amps times by seconds. So therefore, it's potential difference is joules over amps times by seconds, or we can rewrite that as joules amps to the minus one seconds to the minus one. In this next one, we know that power is equal to voltage squared over R. Now, it says in the question that the voltage is the same for both circuits. Now, we know that power, therefore, must be proportional to one over resistance because that voltage squared term is the same for both, so it's an irrelevance in this particular question. Now, in circuit X, the, resistance, the resistors are added, because they're in series, so it becomes 2R. And in Y, the resistance is decreased, because they're in parallel, so it's 1 over RT equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, so it works out to be a half R. So that tells us that X has four times as much resistance compared to Y, so therefore it'll have four times as less power. Next one, if we look in this particular question, what's the internal resistance of the battery? Well, it tells you that it's got a 12 volt EMF and 10 volts terminal potential difference, which indicates to us the lost volts are 2 volts. Now, as the potential difference is directly proportional to resistance, as the lost volts is 2 twelfths okay, of the overall EMF, that's 1 sixth. Okay? So therefore, it must be contributing 1 sixth of the resistance of the total circuit. So that means that if the, the load resistance is R, the internal resistance must be R over 5, as when combined, uh, R over 5, or 0.2R, is 1 sixth of the total 1.2R. Please be careful and not think it's R over 6, which is a common mistake, because remember, it's a sixth of the total, not just of the load. So you've got to consider when you're adding both to each other. Next one, what's the total resistance of this network? Well, you consider the resistance in parallel first, and you know 1 over R total equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. Now, we know in this particular instance that um, all the values of R are X, so therefore R total is 1 third X. So in, now we're in series, we do 1 third X plus X, so we get 4 over 3 X, which is D. Next one here, what do we know about this particular uh, circuit? Well, we know it's measuring the internal resistance of the power supply. Now, it can't have, an, it, it can't have a negative internal resistance because V is varying with I, indicating there must be a resistance in that particular power supply. Now, when, when internal resistance increases, there's less energy transfer to the circuit, so the current goes down. Now, the maximum energy transfer doesn't occur at 12 volts as to achieve the EMF. There's going to be no circuit output, so there can't be any energy transfer to the circuit. But what is true is that the internal resistance is the negative gradient of the line. And if you work out the negative gradient of the line, it's minus 10 over 2, so it's, four, it's 5 ohms. So the answer was D. 
This next particular question, well, we know that length is directly proportional to the resistance of the circuit, and in a potential divider, resistance is directly proportional to potential difference. Now, a QR, the length is 30 over 50, or three-fifths of the circuit, so therefore the resistance is three-fifths of the total, so therefore P, the PD is three-fifths of the total, so the total is three volts, so therefore three-fifths of three volts is 1.8 volts. Next one. Now, in Kirchhoff's second law, now, basically, Kirchhoff's second law is a consequence of energy being conserved in the circuit, or energy per charge being conserved in the circuit. Now, A and C describe Kirchhoff's first law, and statement B is what the principle is based off, while statement D is the consequence. So, because of the fact that energy is conserved in the circuit, the sum of the PD in the circuit is equal to the sum of the products of the current and resistance. Right, uh, 23 now. Which statement is going to be correct? Now, at the base of this question is saying that the circuit at the lower end of the um, particular diagram is equal to the circuit at the upper end of the diagram. So the circuit above the ruler is equal to the circuit below the ruler. So the, which one's not correct? Well, we know for a fact that the potentiometer balance results in a zero current through the galvanometer in both circuits, because if you look at the picture, it's not reading a value. It's staying at zero. Now, the balance point, the current through the resistance in both circuits is the same. Well, we know that because they're balancing each other out, because they're equal in each other out. The current in both of them is equal and out to equal zero, so that must be correct. Now, D, the value of EMF of the cells X and Y is less than 6 volts. Well, we know that to be the case because um, the upper circuit, that uh, value of the terminal PD is less than 6 volts because there's an external resistor in the circuit okay, of R. So therefore, if the upper circuit is less than 6 volts, the lower circuit okay, is less than 6 volts. But which one isn't correct? It's that X has a larger EMF than Y. That can't be the case because if you notice that Y has a larger length of wire needed to balance it out, so therefore the longer the length of wire, the larger the resistance in that circuit, which indicates it must actually have a larger EMF than X to actually equal each other out because you only need 44 centimeters to equal it out in X but 70 centimeters in Y indicating that you need more resistance to dissipate more energy so Y must have the larger EMF. In this next one you work out what uh, each current uh, each resistance is going to be so path P to Q is just a 3 ohm resistor P and R is the 3 and 5 ohm resistor which equals 8 ohms RS is just the 4 ohm resistor. QS is going to be the 5 and the 4 ohm resistor in series, so it's 9 ohms. Now, the highest current gives the lowest resistance and vice versa. So the highest current is going to be PQ because it's the lowest resistance, and the smallest current is QS because it's the highest resistance. Now, what's our unit of resistance? Well, resistance equals PD over current, which is volts over amps, but that isn't going to give us in an SI base unit. So you can say that potential difference is work done over charge, work done is force times by distance, and force is mass times acceleration, and your charge is current times by time. So you've got mass times acceleration times by distance over current times by time over charge, you pop all your values in, you cancel your values through, you put them onto the different uh, parts of your, your division, and you get an answer of B, kilograms, meters squared, seconds to the minus three, amps to the minus two. Next one. If you look at the particular results of the thermistor, you'll notice at the lower temperatures, there's a really large change in resistance, so there'll be a large change in current. But at the high temperatures, there's a small change in resistance, so there'll be a small change in current, so you won't need the, the, the big precision at those values. So you'll need a very widely spread scale at the lower temperatures because there'll be a big change in resistance, so a big change in current, but you'll need a small inter uh, difference in the larger temperatures because there's a small change in resistance, so a small change in current. So the answer was A. In the next question here, what's the, cur what's the current in resistor X? Well, 
you know that current in the circuit is V over R, and the total R is going to be, well, we'll work out the, the resistance in parallel first. So it's 1 over 4,000 plus 1 over 4,000. Then you flip it over, so it's 2,000 ohms. Now, the total resistance in the circuit is therefore the parallel component, which you've just worked out, plus the other resistor, which is 4,000 um, ohms, because they're now in series. So it's now 2,000 ohms plus 4,000 ohms equals 6,000 ohms. So current, therefore, is 6 over 6,000, so it's 0 0.001 amps, or 1 milliamp. Now, when this reaches the junction between the two resistors in parallel, you've now got two particular pathways, and they've got equal resistances, 4,000 and 4,000, so the current will split equally, so it's 1 milliamp over 2, which is 0 0.5 milliamps. Next one, when you work this through, you can look at Kirchhoff's first law that the total current into a junction equals the total current out of the junction. And we know that if you look at the particular arrows, that I1 and I3 are going into that central junction, and I2 is going out of that central junction. So, you know that I1 plus I3 will equal I2. Now, you also will notice that I1 will have the larger current, because it's got a larger EMF for the same resistance, so therefore, it will actually have a larger current. And the only, the only one which has that particular rule is C. So you'd say 3.5 plus 0.5 equals 4, with 3.5 coming from the larger value, which is going to be I1. Next one. Right. Uh, Kirchhoff's first law is based on the conservation of charge. Kirchhoff's second law is based on the conservation of energy per charge. Now, it's asking about the sum of electrical currents. Uh, that links to conservation of charge because current is the rate of flow of charge. So the only possible answer is A. And finally, on the last question, well, like we've mentioned before, in a circuit, the resistance of a wire is directly proportional to its length, and the resistance in a potential divider circuit is directly proportional to potential difference. So, what do we know is going on here? So, we know that that um, as QR has double the resistance of PQ, because you'll notice that QR has a resistance of 10 ohms, and PQ is 5 ohms, it will require double the PD, so double the length, so therefore it will be 25 centimetres. QS now has 10 and 15 ohms, so we'll have a 25 ohm resistance, which is 5 times that of potential difference, so 5 times the length. So 12.5 times by 5 is 62.5 centimetres. And finally, as PR has triple the resistance of PQ, 15 ohms, it will require 3 times the potential difference, so 3 times the length. So it will be 12.5 times by 3, which is going to be 37.5, given an answer of B. So hopefully, in this particular lesson, what we've done is we've looked at certain different questions of electricity and their applications, and you can hopefully see now how you can apply it to different situations. I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson, looking at questions on electricity. Thank you. Have a lovely day.